Welcome to Banfield. If you have never heard the name Dusty Talavera before, get used to it because she's going to be famous. Dusty is America's brand new hero after risking her life in a heartbeat. When she saw three little children plunge through the ice of this frozen pond in Colorado, time stood still for a brief moment. And did I say little? Because what I really meant to say was really, really little, like ages four, six, and 11. They were so little, these children. They did not have the strength to even stay above the surface in that frigid water. Only their little fingers were visible to Dusty as they were wildly grabbing at the crumbling edges of the hole in the ice. But all three were going under, that much Dusty saw. And had Dusty not seen this disaster unfold from her window, those children likely would not be with us today. But she did, and Dusty took off like a rocket. Out onto the ice, she bolted, and despite falling through the ice herself, she pulled each of those three children one by one to safety. Two of the children, the four-year-old and the 11-year-old, were unharmed. The third child, a six-year-old, was not breathing, was not conscious, and had no pulse. Fortunately, Dusty got her out of that pond just in the nick of time, just as these first responders were getting there and could perform CPR today. And this is completely fair to say, miraculously, that little six-year-old girl was released from the hospital. She was walking, she was talking, and she was happy, according to her grateful mom. In this exclusive national interview, I am so happy to be joined now by the woman who made this miracle happen. Dusty Talavera. She saved those three kids in that pond on Sunday. And uh, thank God for her. Wow. Uh, just wow. And she is the one right there in the middle of the two deputies who you also could see on camera as well. Uh, Deputy Moulton and Deputy Dillard with us as well. Okay, Dusty. First of all, hallelujah for you. Second of all, the first thing that went through your mind when you looked out the window and you saw what you saw, take me from that moment. Oh man, I just, you know, it was just a reaction type thing. I don't think much went through my mind. I just told my, I just looked out, saw him fall and I told my husband, let's go. They fell in the water and that was it. We just ran outside. I mean, there wasn't much going through my mind at all. Just, you gotta save the kids. That was, that was pretty much well, it. You you're a, a, a one in a million. Um, as I understand it, your, your husband doesn't swim, so that left you uh, to do what you could. Walk me through your thought process as you got to the edge of that thin ice. I mean, we all know what happens when you see thin ice. It means you're going to go through too. So what did you think and how did you strategize how to get to those children who were going under? I mean, I don't think I really thought it completely through. I just started walking on the ice. I mean, it wasn't much of a thought process. It was just kind of like, a, I got to get there. You know, I got to get there. And um, I mean, I got to the edge of the ice. And honestly, I didn't know I was at the edge till I pulled the two kids out. And then the third kid, I reached for, I, but I ended up falling into the water. And so that's when I kind of knew I was at the edge of the edge of the ice. You knew where you were at that point. Listen, Dusty, I'm going to tell you, I grew up in Winnipeg, Canada, where it was minus 37 on Friday. I know what it feels like to go into extremely cold water. I've done it. Uh, but for those of us who are viewing right now who don't know, explain exactly what that felt like when you went through the ice and you were almost submerged. I mean, I, it was shock. I, my, I, was, I was shook. I mean... I was submerged in water. I was freaking out a little bit. I mean, but I just knew there was like one mission and that was to get her out of the water. And so, I mean, it was kind of like a quick reaction. I had to snap back into like reality and just, I had to grab her. And so I was kind of more worried about her than I was me. Well, Dusty, you're amazing because I'll tell you, uh, it takes your breath away. I'm sure that's no surprise to you now having gone through the experience. When you hit cold water like that, 
you physically can't breathe, your chest feels like it constricts, and your first thought is, get me out as fast as possible. But you got two of the kids out, um, and the six-year-old, that was a struggle. Tell me how you got the six-year-old out, because she was under. Yes, she was. Um, I mean, I was just kind of trying to grab her and pull her up and keep my head above water. And I mean, at one point I tried to go under and push her up, but the water was just so deep that it was impossible. And I mean, I tried to crawl out and turn around and grab her, but it was, I couldn't get out, you know? So you got a hold of her hand. I mean, it was, if I understand it correctly, her hand was about the only thing you could see at that point. Were you able to just grab it and then pull with all your might? Um, I, that was like right before I fell in the water, I could grab her hand and I did grab her hand, but I fell in. And so at that point I was holding onto her body and just, I mean, you know, I'm trying to tread the water and keep my head up. And so I was trying to keep her head up and it was just, it was a struggle. I mean, it was just, yeah. Could you, could you see her face at that point? Could you see that she was unconscious? Uh, I did, yes. And that's what scared me the most is, I mean... <clears throat> I, she couldn't keep her head up anymore, and that's when I started to, like, put my hand behind her head and just, you know. But it was, it was almost impossible. So the next thing that happens is your, your husband gets your dog leash, and he's able to, to somehow fashion a way to get that dog leash out of you. Walk me through how you got yourself and that little girl out of that water hole, um, back up onto the ice and back to safety. Um, my, my husband was pretty quick at the dog leash because I, I have no idea like how quick it came, but it came pretty quick. And there was a brave young man who ended up walking on top of the ice and just kind of throwing us, throwing me the rope a few feet away. And he, I grabbed that rope and he pulled me out. I turned around and I grabbed the little girl and I pulled her out. And so that's how we got out. So were you, I mean, I'm assuming you're, you're, you've got the weight of soaking wet, uh, you know, a soaking wet six-year-old as well as you soaking wet and you're sliding across the ice holding onto the dog leash. The other two kids are already basically at the shore at safety by now. And are they conscious? Uh, yes, they were, they were at safety and conscious. So. And so the first order of business would be to figure out if we can save the little girl. At this point, have the deputies arrived or are they arriving simultaneously? Uh, they were kind of arriving simultaneously. Uh, at that point, the crowd at the edge of the um, pond actually had the little girl and they were trying to revive her or help her out. Okay, so this is where I want to bring in uh, Deputy Moulton. Um, so, Deputy Moulton, I want to play for our audience uh, these moments, uh, and I want to bring the sound up full. And then after the, the tape is over, I want you to walk me through sort of what this was from your perspective as you guys and your body cams, you were arriving on scene and taking in all of this information in real time. So let's watch this moment, the body cam moment, and then I'll ask you something on the other side. Take a look. Okay, uh, Deputy Blaine uh, Moulton, let me tell you, for, for those of us who don't work in your uh, line of work, uh, that is harrowing to watch. Something tells me that this is something you see uh, a lot more than I do. I just want you to take me into your mindset when you got to the edge of the, um, of the pond and, and saw that little girl there. Um, as I was arriving on scene, I saw a gentleman, he, he flagged me down and I figured that was a good place to, to start. Um, I grabbed my AD, ran out there, um, and when I got to her, it was, it was shocking. Um, her eyes were wide open, her mouth was open, and she appeared to be lifeless. Um, when I got to her, I checked for a pulse. I didn't have a pulse, and she was extremely cold to the touch. Shortly after, uh, 
I got there, Deputy Rodriguez showed up and immediately started chest compressions and I was able to get the AD attached to her and perform life-saving CPR on her. And it was, it's not something we come across very often, um, but with a lot of the training from Arapahoe County, uh, prepared me for the best outcome. Well, the best outcome, I think, uh, is what we witnessed on this second body cam moment. And I'll tell you what, it brought tears to my eyes um, watching the revival of this little girl. So, Deputy Justin Dillard, I want to play this moment. I'm going to ask you uh, something about it on the other side. Let me just take our viewers to the moment where the CPR worked. Take a look at this. Watch out, back up. Back up. Here we go. Press. Here we go. Press. 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 There you go, honey. Come on. Baby. There you go, honey. Come on, baby. There you go. Come on, baby. Just get out. Just get out. Oh, hey, there you go. There you go. Come on, baby. There you go, hon. There you go. Come on, baby. Sweetheart. Come on, baby. All right, sweetheart. Analyzing hard. All right, sweetheart. There you go. Wow. Uh, I mean, just that's uh, just a remarkable uh, moment. Uh, so, Deputy Dillard, that you know, that's what makes your job worthwhile. I'm assuming, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. So we, we end up going to a lot of calls where we see a lot of things that we don't want to see. Um, that being no different on, on Sunday. Um, so running up and, uh, and seeing a six-year-old little girl with her eyes open and her face was blue, not breathing and not call conscious or responding whatsoever. Um, and then by that moment that you just watched on, on the body cam, uh, after Deputy Rodriguez had performed, um, numerous rounds of, of chest compressions and we were able to get her wet clothes off and the AED on and um, Deputy Moulton also was, gave uh, rescue breaths um, to see her chest start to rise again. Um, so I know I can speak you know, on, on Deputy Moulton's behalf and Deputy Rodriguez. We all, all three of us have daughters um, and um, to see a, a six-year-old girl on the ground that way, it's hard not to see your own daughter that way. Um, and same thing with uh, with South Metro Fire that showed up um, when they saw. Um, you can hear them as well. They uh, they also they're, they're we're all we're all dads. We're all just just guys. And um, to uh, you know we it, it, you see your own kid when when you're looking into uh, uh, somebody on the ground that way. So I'm just very grateful that it, it turned out that way. Um, we do go to a lot of calls where it doesn't. So we're just very very thankful um, it turned out this way. So, Dusty, part of the, the video of the, you know, what we're looking at with the body cam as the deputies are arriving and jumping out of the car, I think, and you got to get me, you know, up to speed here, I think it's your husband who's running in front of them and showing them where to go, and he's only wearing shorts, and this is Arapahoe County in Colorado, where I'm sure it's freezing cold. Uh, walk me through that whole process. Um, I mean, as far as what he told me, he, he didn't feel the cold at all. He wasn't even worried about it, you know. He didn't even realize he didn't have a shirt on at the time. So, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about the child as well. I mean, he's, it was a team effort. Dusty, was there any point, because like I said off the top, he doesn't swim, so it was up to you. Um, was there any point where you thought you might not, you might not get out of there? Not really. I mean, I'm not too good of a swimmer, but <laughs> I just knew that, you know, they're, they're quick to respond. I mean, once once my husband dialed 911, that was I, I knew I was going to be OK, you know, no matter what happened. All right. So I'll tell you what, um, I mean, this is just such an incredible story that I just like to see smiles on your faces. Deputies is just one of those things that. I, it just makes my job uh, so much more pleasant because, you know, in the news business, um, we don't often get to report on these kinds of results. So I'm so thrilled. And, and Dusty, I'm going to tell you something. Thank God for you, because there's not a lot of people who would do what you did. This is a weird question, and I don't know if you've pondered it yet, but do you even feel like the hero that the rest of us truly know you are? 
I don't really, I don't really think so. I mean, I would have done it for anybody, and I, I'd hope that somebody would do it for me or my child if I ever had one. So, I don't really think about it like that. So I do know one thing, and in, in some of the videos, Dusty, and you'll know better because this is your your community. I saw a sign that was posted at the edge of the pond, uh, you know, warning about like no wading and uh, caution, open waterway. These are kind of summer summer warnings. But was there any warning anywhere uh, that the ice was thin or to not you know walk onto the ice? I I don't believe so. I don't believe. I haven't, if anything, I haven't seen it, you know. I think I'm seeing in the top right-hand corner of the picture I'm looking at, there might be like a fountain. Is there a fountain in the middle that kept that ice thin in the, in the center of the pond? Uh, yes. So there's no chance for that pond to ever get thick ice in the middle if the fountain's still going, correct? Correct. So tell me a little bit about that that whole community of apartments and condos, it looks like, that they must be just overwhelmed by what happened basically in their backyard. Um, yeah, I, you would, I, I think so. I mean, I've had, I, it was so nice. I had a couple um, kids actually come to my door today and knock on my door and just, you know, just tell me that they're happy that the little girl's okay and that I'm okay and that, I mean, I would have done it for them. I would have done it for anybody in this community. I mean... It's all about helping people out and spreading love, so. Well, speaking of spreading the love, uh, that little six-year-old, uh, her dad, Walter Williams, as I understand it, is just off camera. I'm going to ask our cameraman to, to see if he can uh, work into the shot, uh, Walter Williams, because I want to know what it was like when you first met um, the parents, uh, you know, of of the little girl you saved, Dusty. And Walter, I'd love to know what it was like for you to meet Dusty, who basically saved the life of your little six-year-old girl. Um, well, you know, it was Dusty and Daceon and Shemaj and uh, multiple people, the officers, the, the person who ran and showed them. It was a puzzle of people. So it's no greater feeling for one than the other because everybody played their part in saving my daughter's life so it was a common goal that everybody was after so I, I just thankful for everyone involved I'll bet Walter um, you know and, and obviously a heroic effort uh, to save all three of those children but if it weren't for Dusty looking out that window and beelining it and putting herself in danger and going through the ice um, I mean she really is she really is like your guardian angel over there what was it like when you first met her um, it was, it was great. I mean, <laughs> meeting them all, I mean, it was, it was, it was great. You know, it was like, it's, you can't explain it because the people that, that acted in, in such a way to where they wasn't thinking about their own lives, but just the lives of the others is, is great. And you don't see that a lot of times, like you guys said, you know, the officers, and the police department ain't always glorified. So this was a light shed on them and Arapahoe County Sheriff's that they too cared. And if you hear in the video, you hear more than just trying to do their duty, you hear compassion and, you know, like it was their own child, the love and care and concern. So it was great. Walter, how is your little girl? And, and tell me if I'm pronouncing her name right. Is it Zakia? Zakaya. Zakaya, how is Zakaya doing tonight? Well, look here, she's right here. So ah! she's doing great. Say there hi. She hi. Is. hi. Hi. Can she so, can she hear me? I don't know if she's got an earpiece in. Can no, she don't have an earpiece, but say hi. Hi. <laughs> she said hi. Can you Walter, can you ask Here, her how she feeling tonight? I had a stuff. How you, they said, how you feeling tonight? Good. Good. She said good. <laughs> She's feeling okay. How you? Can you ask her, can you ask her, Walter, how she feels about Dusty? How you feel about Dusty and the people that helped you? Uh, <laughs> thank you. She said, thank you. 
<laughs> and Walter, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think your, your wife, Tashira, might be a little bit off camera as well. Can she pop in and say hello? Yeah, she can pop in and say hello. I'll share the mic. Come on. Yeah. Just come over. There she is. Just listen. Hey there. Hey there, Tashira. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. I'll bet it's been a day, huh? Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you a question, if I can. As you look over to your right and you see Dusty standing there in the white coat, uh, the woman who raced to that pond and risked her life to pull your little girl out, how do you feel about her uh, right about now? Really? She's a hero right now. She saved my baby. She, she tried. It had somebody else to step in, but she tried her hardest to get my baby. And I appreciate her. I'll bet you are hugging Zakaya real close uh, in the last couple of days, right? She's feeling okay, out of the hospital, all good. Is she back to normal, playing, eating, everything? She, yeah, she's to her normal self. And everything's okay. And yes, what do you want to say to the, uh, I was going to say, what do you want to say to those officers off to your right as well, the, the two who did the CPR and, and saved Zakaya's life? The officers, I just want to let them know I appreciate them. I thank them. What for all of them? You were hurt. My baby, I mean, they saved her. And I thank everybody for what they've done. Everybody. You know, Dusty, when you stand there and you see the effect, um, the emotional impact and the reality of your bravery, uh, it's got to be a lot to process, I'm guessing. It is. It's, it's honestly, it's just very heartwarming just to meet them and just to go, see her and just <laughs> know she's, she's okay. okay. And she looks like she's hug. doing great. Have you have you had a chance for a hug? <laughs> <laughs> a few of them. It's a nice it's a nice dry hug, isn't it? Hey, all of you, I cannot thank you enough. Dusty Talavera, Lacan Yusuf, uh, Deputy Blaine Moulton, Deputy Justin Dillard, uh, Zakaya Williams, uh, to Shire Williams and Walter Williams. That's a that's a lot of names, but a lot of love, all in one group of people. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you, and God bless. Yes. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.